simple song like this. I've got the victory, hallelujah.
delivered you? Who set you free? Call his name. Call his name. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name. There's freedom in the name. So call his name. When you get in trouble, you can call that name. When you get in trouble, you can call that name. You need him. Call on his name. Call on his name. Call his name. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Savior of the world. Savior of the world. Call his name. He'll come and heal you. He'll come and deliver you. He'll come and give you strength. Strength to make it. He's a worthy king. Call his name. Everybody clap your hands. Oh. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands. Oh. We came to worship the Lord.
Hallelujah. 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 Oh Lord. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. Nobody else gets the hallelujah but him. It is our highest praise. He deserves it. So we shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. We praise God and we honor God for our being in here. We honor the pulpit. We honor all of the people of God. Our order of service for today. Our prayer will be by Alea Haskins and Tyrone Davis. Our scripture by Mrs. Amaria Duncan. And then we will have our testimony service. And then following that, we will have an encouraging scripture from Mr. Nero O'Neill and Ms. Jada Davis. Amen. Then we will have our sermonic selection. And we will then stand to receive the word of the Lord from our very own Minister Marcus Green. Amen. Amen. Our, our order of search will proceed as follows. But we will let the Lord have his way. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Lord, and for helping us and for helping us stay alive. Amen. I thank the Lord for bringing me here and waking me up. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 5. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thou said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I have healed, I healed thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Testimony service open. Good morning. Um, my scripture is um, Philippians 1.13. I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. This helps me because with anything that I'm struggling with, God can help strengthen me through it. Amen. My scripture is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This scripture helped me because it helped me and um try to keep me on the right path and just not worry about other things that be bothering me or whatever. Amen. Amen. It may be a it's a well known scripture, hallelujah, but God can help us through anything that we face. So I thank the Lord for that. They shared that with me on this week, and I asked them to share that today. Amen. So I thank God for them. And we're going to get ready and prepare our hearts for the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just want to just help me say, my soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. So
loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, bless his name, he's a wonder. Tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. If you really believe that he's worthy of your thank you, if he's worthy of your hallelujah, this is an opportunity for you to open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 God, we glorify you. We magnify your name this morning. God, you are an awesome God. Oh, God, and we now know it's preaching time, and I can't preach without you. God, we pray that you continue to have your way. We thank you for your presence being in this place today, God. Oh, God, we thank you for meeting us here, oh, God. Oh, God, and having your way in this place, God. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you honor, God. We acknowledge you as our Lord and as our Savior. We don't take you for granted. We don't take your presence being here for granted. Oh God, you manifest your presence in this place, God, because you want to meet our needs. You want to help us, oh God. You want to deliver us, oh God. You want to refresh us, oh God. Oh God, help us not to hold back. Help us not to be in our own heads, God. Help us to lay aside our agendas in the flesh today, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We do honor the Lord and thank God for this opportunity of being here. Thank God for our pastor and first lady. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. Thank God for the deacon brothers missionary. Amen. To all the saints of God. Let's give the young people a hand clap. All the young people in here on the day. Amen. Now give yourself a hand clap. Amen. Because the bed feels the best on Sunday. Amen. But you got yourself up, got yourself dressed, and pressed your way to the house of the Lord. Amen. And it'll be a shame for us to come here. Amen. And not get what we need from God. Amen. I thank God for my own beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. If don't nobody else clap for her, I clap for her. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. And 
And there is a word from the Lord. I ask that you would please pray with me. Amen. As we go forth in the word of God. And let's go to Exodus chapter 9 uh, and verse 1. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 1. And then we'll go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, and Matthew 16 and 19. Amen. If you have it, say amen. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. Let's go to Matthew 16 and verse 19. It says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. And we're going to preach from the thought I'm going in to bring them out. I'm going in to bring them out. Amen. We are familiar with this passage and we know that Pharaoh had plenty of warnings and went through plagues but was still reluctant to let God's people go. For the people that were in that bondage, they probably felt like there was no hope. They probably felt like there was no way out. They felt like there was no end to what they were going through. But one day Moses got a word from God telling him to go down into Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let his people go so that they may serve him. As a matter of fact, when we get to this point in chapter 9, this was the fifth time God had sent Moses back with this same word. But I'm here to encourage you today that no matter how reluctant Pharaoh was, God told Moses, you go down there and bring them out in my name. Moses probably felt like he was discouraged at times. He felt like he wasn't going to be able to accomplish what God sent him down to do. But he always remembered that he had a word from God. Amen. I'm here to encourage you today, saints of God, when you have a word from God, all you have to do is obey that word. You just take God at his word. He said, I'm sending you down there and you tell him to let my people go. Amen. It may look hard sometime. It may look like it's not going to be the results what God said it was going to be. But at, we know at the end, the results is that the people of God came out because God said they was coming out. But Moses was obedient and he went into hostile territory, but he went into hostile territory with a word from God. I'm here to encourage you today, saints of God. The devil knows that he can't get you one way. He'll try to get you another. Amen. He didn't try to attack your body. He tried to attack your finances, tried to attack your vehicles, your cars. Amen. But now he's trying to attack your family. He's trying to attack stuff that's around you. So God is sending us today that we still have a purpose. Our purpose just ain't to come to church and shout. Our purpose just ain't to come to church and smile at each other. But God still gives us to a command to go into hostile territory and tell the devil that you gotta let our people go. You gotta let the people of God go because now he's trying to overtake our mind with worry. He got us worried about our family members, got us worried about our communities, got us worried about our co-workers. Amen. We see that they need prayer. We see the things that they're going through. But what this reminds us is, is that the church has a purpose. Amen. And the purpose is not for us just to come together and enjoy the Lord on Sunday but we have to go out into the world amen and we have to bring them out of the bondage that they're in 
We can't give up when we know what's right to do. Amen. We can't turn a blind eye to the prostitute. We can't turn a blind eye to the drunkard. We can't turn a blind eye to the pimp. We can't turn a blind eye because we know that they ain't doing this just because they choosing to. It's a spirit behind everything that they do. Amen. But if we know that we can call them out, then we got to not be quiet, but we got to get to the point where we just get to calling them out of what they're in. Him. Moses, he told him, he gave him a word. He, he, Mo, he had to go and tell Pharaoh to let the people go. He couldn't just show up in front of Pharaoh and not say a word. Can I preach up in here? So you would in here worried about your family, your loved ones, and people that are going through, but you ain't saying nothing. Amen. You got to open up your mouth and tell that devil, you got to get your hands off of them. Uh, you got to take your hands off their mind. Take your hands off their spirit. Take your hands off their heart amen so we can call them out of what they're in we can't give up and that's why there's a lack of reverence for the people of God now because when the world looks at the modern church uh, they see a lot of flyers they see a lot of programs uh, but they hear a lot of noise but they don't see no purpose uh, amen they see a lot of photo ops but they don't see a church with purpose uh, God put us here to be witnesses into the world uh, he didn't send us here just to give all the time y'all ain't gonna help me up in here uh, but he want us to go out and bring people to him uh, because he the one that's gonna change them uh, it ain't the clothes that we give them. Huh? It ain't the money or the food that we give them. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? But it's when we give them Jesus. Huh? That's the only time they're going to be really delivered. Huh? That's the only time they're going to be able to come out what they're in. Huh? Can I preach up in here? So what we are doing now huh, is we're giving the world a lot of information without giving them Jesus. Huh? We're giving them a lot of scripture, but we ain't giving them Jesus. Huh? We're giving them a lot of this in that but we need to give them Jesus but now the world they look at us uh, and they see a church that gives up so easily because they don't agree with what we agree with they may not look like what we think they should look like they might not talk the way we think they should talk uh, but there are a lot of people who still are in the world uh, who believe they are in a hopeless situation just like the children of Israel uh, they don't know what to do they don't know where to go uh, can I preach up in here but we have a purpose uh, and that's to go into the devil's camp uh, and call the people of God out so they may serve him. Uh, that brings me to my next one. The church now, we ain't trying to call them out to serve him. Uh, we trying to get them in the choir. Uh, we trying to get them on the praise team. Uh, we trying to get their tithes and their offering. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, we trying to get their names on our church roll. Uh, but we don't want them to come out so they can serve God. Uh, we want them to serve our agenda. Uh, Want them to serve our program. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Want them to help us get to the next level. What God said, he sent Moses down huh? to call them out to serve him. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? So when we all get to serving God, huh? then we'll be more effective. Huh? We can make a change in the world. Huh? We going in the hostile territory, getting stuck huh? in the same place they in huh? because we ain't worried about serving God, huh? but we in our flesh uh, but you can't whoop the flesh with the flesh uh, you can't whoop the devil in your flesh uh, you going in the hostile territory uh, if you used to be a drunker you can't hang around drunkers uh, and you ain't full of the holy ghost uh, you can't go around a drug addict uh, if you used to do drugs uh, and you ain't being led by the holy ghost uh, he sent Moses in the hostile territory with a word uh, because he knew he can handle the situation uh, can I preach up in God is calling us not to be afraid but to go into these hostile territories and call these people out. Can I preach up in here? Uh, but we have to be persistent uh, Moses like I said by the by time we got to chapter 9 uh, this was the fifth time he didn't had this word uh, this was the fifth time he didn't said uh, God told me to tell you uh, to let his people go uh, but we have to be persistent we can't get weary when God tells us to do something uh, we have to go in and bring them out uh, because God said bring them out uh, but can I encourage you he gives us the power 
to do this. And that's where we go to Matthew 16. Because he said that I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. Uh, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth uh, shall be loose in heaven. Uh, so we got to remember that we got keys, y'all. Uh, and we see this same thing with Moses. Uh, because ain't no way you just going to walk up in the, into Pharaoh uh, and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Uh, some kind of way the door had to be open. Uh, but when you know who God is, uh, God say, I'll give you keys. So keys, you either going to lock something up or you going to unlock something. So Moses had the key and he had to unlock the door in order to step in front of Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let the people go. Say yes to God. So when we go in, we have to realize huh, that these just ain't an ordinary keys, huh, but these keys gives us access to heaven. Huh. So when we go in, when I unlock the door to heaven, huh, that means I'm going in with heavy artillery. Huh. Can I preach up in here? Huh. When I unlock the door to heaven, huh, that means I'm going in with the power of God, huh, with the presence of God, huh, with the direction of God, huh, with the empowerment of God, huh, so I can be confident. Uh, that when I go in with this word uh, I'm going in with a word that God is going to back up uh, say yes to God uh, so it don't matter how many times the devil say no uh, it don't matter how many times it look like the situation ain't going to change uh, God said let the people go uh, and if he said let them go that means he got to bring them out uh, say yes to God because uh, he ain't going to send me nowhere uh, without being a God that's going to back up his word uh, say yes to God Yes, God. Huh? Now, he gives us a word about these powers huh? that he gives us access to. Huh? The first one was the power to bind the enemy. Huh? And bind, that means to fix or to hold in place. Huh? That means you arrest the movement of something. Huh? And this is the one that we love to do. Huh? We love to bind the devil. Huh? We love to bind this and bind that. Huh? But can I open up your eyes to something? Huh? When you bind the devil, huh? that means you just stop him. Huh? That means you just hold him. Huh? But what you gonna do when you got him bound? Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? Because bound don't mean destroyed. Huh? Bound don't mean dead. Huh? Bound just mean that you put a halt to what he's doing. Uh, say yes to God uh, but Matthew 12 28 and 29 uh, it tells us but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God uh, then the kingdom of God is come unto you uh, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house uh, and spoil his goods uh, except he first bind the straw man uh, and then he will spoil his house uh, so what that encourages us thanks to God that we can bind the works of darkness uh, you can bind the devil's plan to the point where it can't go no further. Uh, you can bind evil progress and it'll stop. Uh, you can bind evil thoughts, uh, evil imaginations, uh, evil plans, evil attacks. Uh, can God allow these attacks to come upon us? Uh, because the devil, he wants to try us. Uh, can I preach up in here? The devil want to take as many of us to hell. Huh? He wants to keep our minds occupied. Huh? So we have to remember that huh? God allows these attacks huh? because he wants you to help him. Huh? He wants to help you destroy huh? what the devil is trying to come against you with. Huh? We just don't bind it and watch it. Huh? Can I preach up in here? Huh? And that's what we do in there nowadays. Huh? We bind in the devil huh? and we just had it. Huh? We satisfied with just seeing it him tied up, huh? seeing him bound, huh? and we wonder why it's a cycle, huh? why they keep going back, huh? why this keep happening again, huh? because now you just satisfied huh? with having the devil bound, huh? but when he's bound, huh? that means you gotta destroy him, huh? you gotta take advantage of the opportunity, huh? can I preach up in here, huh? you gotta make up in your mind that I'm not going back huh? to where I used to be, huh? I'm not doing what I used to do, 
I'm not being satisfied with where I'm at, but I'm going to destroy this devil. Can I preach up in here? We can destroy one another one coming. So that's why he said whatever you're buying now, it's going to be bound in the same time. If you read that scripture, you're talking about binding. He said it's going to be bound. So he's still already ahead of you because bind is present tense, but bound is past tense. Can I preach up in here? So he's just waiting on us to catch up because he knows what he's capable of. That we have to have the faith in God. That I'm going to go in and bring my loved ones out and I'm going to bind what cast them in bondage. Say yes to God. Yes, God, uh, which leads us to this second power. Uh, he tells us to loose. Uh, and this is the main focus for this message. Uh, because we love the bind, uh, but we don't have the confidence to loose stuff. Because uh, when you lose something, uh, you want to see it. Can I preach up in here? Uh, but we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, we got to call things off. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, we got to have faith in God. Uh, say yes to God. So what does it mean to lose something? Uh, according to the word of God, uh, it means that you can free somebody uh, from the particular control. Uh, you can release somebody uh, from being in captivity. Uh, you can help somebody uh, be ready to serve God. Uh, and remember, we ain't calling them out to serve us, uh, but we leading them to freedom uh, so they can serve God say yes to God. In Luke 11 and 9, Jesus said and I say unto you ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. But you got to remember the reoccurring theme in that passage is the word shall. And that means it's a promise and I intend on doing just what I said. So we got to ask like we know God is intending on giving it to us. We got to seek like we know God is going to reveal it to us. Huh? And we got to knock like we know God is intending huh? on opening up the doors huh? so we can bring the people out huh? so they may serve him. Huh? Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. Huh? In 2 Timothy 2 and 25, huh? and verse 26 explains this a little bit deeper to us. Huh? It says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, huh? if God peradventure will give them repentance huh? to the knowledge of the truth, huh? that they might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, huh? who are taken captive by him huh? at his will. Huh? So a lot of us, we know, say yes to God. We know a lot of people uh, who are being influenced by the devil. Uh, we know a lot of people uh, who are in captivity of the enemy. Uh, and that's exactly what they are. Uh, they are captives. Uh, and to be a captive, that simply means that they are hostages. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, and a hostage is somebody that's in a position uh, where they don't have no power. Uh, they don't have no freedom. Uh, they don't have no will. Uh, the one thing we got to know is they are hostage. Uh, they may not have no power. Huh? They may not have no freedoms. Huh? But they aren't dead yet. Huh? Say yes to God. Huh? They ain't dead. They just powerless. Huh? They just ain't got no use. Huh? They can't be effective. Huh? And they are in bondage. Huh? Say yes to God. Uh, yes Lord uh, and the children of Israel was in bondage uh, but no matter how crazy things got uh, there was always something uh, drawing them back to their God uh, can I encourage you today saints of God uh, a lot of people now claiming to be woke uh, and they discouraging Jesus Christ uh, but no matter how crazy they seem uh, it's always something drawing them back to God uh, it's always a new religion uh, a new kind of information Information, huh, that's trying to confuse the young people huh, and people all over the world. Huh, but we can't be discouraged huh, because it's always something that, that's going to happen huh, to draw them back to God. Huh, say yes to God. Huh, there's always something drawing them to freedom. Huh, there's always something drawing them to praise God. Huh, and Jesus is still freeing people today. Huh, say yes to God. 
yes Lord so Jesus has given us the word to tell the devil that it's time to let his people go let them go so they can praise you let them go so they can serve you and when it gets worse say yes to God look like the enemy trying to tighten his hold on them look like the enemy just don't want to let them go but second Corinthians 3 and 17 he says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty say yes to God the people of God were hostages they were alive but they didn't have no life they didn't have no future Yes, Lord, but God made a way where there seemed to be no way, and he still set them free. If the devil has hostages, that means he's looking for a ransom. Say yes to God. When you take a hostage, in order to get a hostage back, that means a price has to be paid. Say yes to God. And to free from captivity, that means you got to pay a price. But 1 Timothy 2 verses 5 and 6, it tells us, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for us all to be testified in due time. Yes, Lord. So if we go in, we going in with a word that God said to let the people go. Why we can go in with confidence? Because he has them in bondage. He has them captive. But he's already paid the ransom. He's done his part by dying on the cross. Say yes to God. We got to get back to preaching the word of God. God, that's what's going to save them. That's what's going to bring them out. How Jesus died so they don't have to be in captivity. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. So just like he freed the children of Israel, God will do the same for you. He'll do the same for your children. He'll do the same for your spouse. He'll do the same for your co-workers. Say yes to God. But we have to take God at his word and go in and bring them out. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord, I got to leave you now, but just to encourage you, Daniel 11 and verse 32, it tells us that the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Say yes to God, and exploits mean that we're going to do a daring action, and we're going to make a daring achievement. Say yes to God. So if we know God, like we say we know God, he said that we're going to do exploit. Yes, God. So it's time that we call him out and don't let the devil lie to us. Like it's always going to be like this. This is something I'm always going to have to deal with. Say yes to God. Because if I keep calling on God, sooner or later, things are going to turn for our favor. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. So if we know God, like we say we know God the word of God says that we're going to do exploits that means I'm going to dare the devil I'm going to dare you to take your hands off of him say yes to God I'm going to dare to tell him Yes, Lord, that the people are coming out. No matter what you got on them, they coming out. Say yes to God. They coming out of sin, coming out of depression, coming out of poverty, coming out of drug addiction, coming out of fear, coming out of confusion. 
coming out. They're coming out of lesbianism. Coming out of homosexuality. They're coming out. Coming out of being a murderer. Coming out of being a molester. They're coming out. Coming out of being an adulterer. They coming out. Coming out of being a drunkard. They're coming out. Coming out of being a homemonger. They're coming out. They're coming out of sickness. They're coming out of disease. They're coming out. Say yes to God if you believe that God is going to do just what he said. Say yes to God. Yes, God. I'm here now. Yes, Lord. And I could see Moses knowing with the keys he had, knowing with the access that he had. He's standing in front of Pharaoh. And now I'm at the place of no return. And he made up in his mind. Since I'm here, I'm not leaving by myself. Say yes to God. So how much do you love God? Because what he did wasn't just for the people, but it was how he reverenced God. Say yes to God. Because the devil can tell us no one time, and we ready to throw in the towel. Say yes to God. But this Moses, he was persistent. He kept going. Why? Because he had a word. He had a word from God. Uh, say yes to God uh, so we gotta remember uh, that God has gave us a word uh, he said if you decree a thing uh, say yes to God uh, then it shall come to pass uh, say yes to God uh, so I'm going in uh, just to bring them out uh, may have to shed some tears uh, but I'm bringing them out uh, may have to go through heartaches uh, but I'm bringing them out out. Say yes to God. Make it a little uncomfortable. But I gotta do what I gotta do just to bring them out. I don't know why God takes us where he takes us. I don't know why God allows us to feel pain. I don't know why we have to shed tears. But at the end of the day, the tears are gonna be worth it. If it brings glory to God. The pain is going to be worth it if we bring glory to God because one day he promised that there will be a time where he's going to wipe all the tears from your eyes. Say yes to God. He's going to remove all the pain, all the suffering. Time that was won't be no more. Say yes to God and I'm not taking this trip by myself I got family that need to be saved a community that need to be saved co-workers that need to be saved a spouse that may need to be saved say yes to God you may have children that need to be saved say yes to God so you got to make up in your mind uh, that God told us uh, that whosoever uh, shall call uh, on the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, I believe God. Yes, God. I believe God. Yes, Lord. I believe God. In every word that he's given us, say yes to God. So we got to get to the point where it's no matter what your boss say, no matter what the doctors say, no matter what anybody say, but all that matter is what this word say. Say yes to God, we ain't a time now where we can't trust the news. You can't trust the doctor. You can't trust anybody. But the one man you can trust is God Almighty because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Say yes. Yes to God. He 
wants us to surrender to his will. He wants us to cast all of our cares. Cast our cares. Cast our cares on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Say yes to God. He cares. He cares for you. Open up your mouth and say he cares for me. Open up your mouth and say he cares for me. Say yes to God. Open up your mouth and say he cares for me. Yes, God, because if you know that he cares, the devil can't lie to you like he don't care. He can't lie to you like God don't hear you. He can't lie to you like he ain't going to answer your prayer. He ain't lie to you like God ain't there. Because God said in his word that I never leave. Say never leave. You'll never leave. He'll never leave us. Nor will he forsake us. So when it looks like you're at your breaking point. When it looks like you're at the end of your rope. Say yes to God. Open up your eyes. Wipe your tears. And you really see that your breaking point is really a turning point. Say yes to God. I've been hurt broken. Been going through pain. Been laboring in prayer. Been fasting. Say yes to God. And I'm at the point of no return. Say yes to God. But right when it seems like we're at our weakest, God shows up and again proves his word that when we weak, that's when he shows somebody in here may be weak now. God wants to show you that I am your strength. I am your joy. You are where you are because I brought you this far. Say yes. Yes to God. Yes, God. God is saying, I called you for this purpose. You can't die in depression. You can't die in your worry. You can't die in your stress. You can't die in your sin. You can't die. You gotta live. You gotta live. Because you got a job to do. You got purpose. Say yes to God. Your prayers, they are being heard. Your prayers, they are getting through. In due time, say in due time. In due time, I'm going to show up. Because remember what I told you. In the world, I'm looking across the whole earth for a reason to show myself strong. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. So we find confusion and we lose the sound mind. Say yes to God. We find sin. We lose salvation. Say yes to God. We find bondage. We lose freedom. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. Open up your mouth and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants us to get up off our do nothing. And we got to do something. Say yes to God. We just looking at the people. Talking about what they going through. Say yes to God. We see the predicament that they in. But what we going to do about it. Oh yes God. God chose us for this moment. This is our time. Say 
say yes to God, to bring glory to God, we got to get our minds off ourselves. Get our minds off what we going to get. Say yes to God. Get our minds on how it's going to benefit us. And think about glorifying God. Because we calling them out. Because we want them to be saved. We want them to be delivered. We want them to be set free. Say yes to God. And when we pray for others, watch how God bless us. Watch how God elevates us. Watch how God shifts us. Say yes to God. Because the church that God founded wasn't a selfish church. Can I preach up in here? They weren't a church that just looked out for themselves. Say yes to God. They prayed for other people. Say yes to God. They wanted other people people huh, to be delivered huh. they wanted everybody huh, to be filled with the Holy Ghost huh. yes Lord huh. and that reminds me huh, when they were in the upper room huh, say yes to God huh. the Bible says huh, that they were all huh, with one accord huh. that means they weren't praying huh, for their own individual purposes huh. say yes to God huh. but they went in the prayer huh, with a mission huh, that we we all going to leave here empowered, say yes to God, and that's my prayer for the people of God this morning, that when we go out, we can't serve our self own self agendas, but when we leave out this room, we all going to be empowered, and we all going to go out with the power of the Holy I just feel like preaching. The power of the Lord is in this place to help us, empower us, refresh us, say yes to God so we can be effective, so we can go in and use this authority that God told us in the word. He said, I give you power over all the enemies. Say yes to God. So you can tread on the scorpion. You can tread on the serpent. Say yes to God. That means when you go out, you walk like you got power. Say yes to God. You walk with confidence. He don't want us to walk with our shoulders slumped, with our heads down, looking pitiful. Because we don't serve a pitiful God. We don't serve a weak God. Because when I show up, I ain't going to show out. But God going to show out. God is going to make it happen. Say yes to God. He's going to to do what he said. He said by his stripes you are here. Say yes to God. And he also told us that if his people which are called by his name will humble themselves, seek his face and pray, then he'll heal. Say yes to God. And then he'll heal the land. So he he gave us all these words so we just gotta take him at his word stop looking at what it looks like God said that I still got the power because when Jesus died he made a statement when he got up he said that I have all power yes God in my hand and that still ain't changed he still got all power. Yes, Lord. He still has the power. Say yes to God. Now put your heads together and give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. <laughs> 